Hello YouTube, Merry Christmas. Uh, this is Jim Nate from Jim Nate Woodworks. Um, I'm gonna do a quick video today. Um, I just got a updated version of the laser that I had been reviewing. Um, I don't know if you've seen my videos. I've reviewed a prototype version of the new 15 watt laser from Op Lasers that I purchased about five months ago. Uh, I did a few videos on what you can do with it and, and how I liked it and everything. Um, and since then they've come out with the production version and I wanted to uh, upgrade to this because uh, it has a few uh, improvements over the prototype and I uh, really like the look of it and stuff so um, I went ahead and upgraded. Um, so I'm going to cover uh, what the differences are and the advantages and see how it compares to the prototype in this. One thing to note that this new laser shipped with a little heavier cable that goes between the control box and the laser. Um, presumably it's got, it's, it's about one gauge heavier it looks like uh, in wire so it's a little heavier duty and I presume it's, you know, this laser is um, several, or three times as much wattage as their smaller uh, six watt one so um, I think they just decided to upgrade because of the higher current. Um, so the one on the left is the prototype that uh, I got maybe three, four, no, it's about five months ago now. Um, and you can see it's got a, um, the electronics are in the uh, 3D printed box and it came with a 3D printed shroud on here. And I added the air assist nozzle. This is actually off of a CO2 laser. Um, it didn't come with anything uh, and so since the prototype was developed and they went to the production version you can see they added a very nice air assist nozzle that comes with it standard um, so uh, the, the profile is about the same on, on the base unit but the front cover here is removed so it's a little more compact uh, in the forward direction um, and then Overall, it's maybe a quarter inch shorter vertically and about the same width. So a little more compact and sleek. It looks really nice, you know, like all of Op Laser's products. Um, very nice machined aluminum case. One thing you can tell from the version I made of this is since this is a CO2 laser uh, air assist nozzle, it's got a much bigger orifice on it. And uh, it worked okay, but the problem with that is is it takes a lot of air. Um, the bottom line is you want good air velocity uh, when with an air assist unit to keep the smoke away and to blow smoke through the cut and keep the cut clear when you're cutting. And that just takes a lot of volume of air. So my air compressor was always running trying to keep up with this. And so um, I'm hoping that this new, well you can see the size is about a third. I that. should be able to get the same air velocity with significantly lower air consumption. So that's one thing I really want to try out. And the other thing is that the distance between this nozzle and the cut um, or workpiece is significantly lower than the original one I made as well. So that should um, make it um, require less air pressure in the first place because it'll be much closer to the cut. Uh, the other thing you can see is this is a very stout uh, machined aluminum nozzle and what's cool is it threads right off and you can get at the lens to, to clean it. However, it's not mounted to the lens like my, my prototype. Um, I actually clamp this to the lens. This is mounted to the separate housing. Um, so, you know, if you bump into something, you're not going to wreck the lens housing and you can actually replace this. Now, one thing to note is this is factory aligned here to uh, be aligned with the, the lens. So you don't really want to loosen these up and move them around or you're going to mess up the uh, alignment there and you could have uh, trouble getting that back to where it needs to be. Um, the other thing I want to note here is that this is uh, all conductive. It's uh, um, So I'm going to try and use this nozzle with my electronic touch plate on my Avid C&C. &C. Um, 
because I get very good conductivity through this. So I'll, I'll probably demonstrate that in a different video, but um, I believe that's going to make a very nice method to set my Z height versus the kind of manual process I've been using, which works okay, but it's, it's slow. Um, so let's get this thing mounted and try it out. Okay, I have the new blazer mounted. Um, I did mount the new cable that came with it. I don't know that it's that much heavier, um, but it's much more flexible. So I think it's a much more appropriate cable to run down my gantry. So it goes all the way through my Z stage E chain and then uh, my X axis E chain. And then I just coil the X route back here. It goes into the back of my control box. Um, this is also, um, this is the same box that I got w when I bought the original prototype. Um, and this is the same box I use with all the op lasers, but uh, I mounted that to the side of my gantry. You can kind of see the whole thing here. Um, it came with a length of hose, um, so I use uh, the air assist nozzle comes out the back under here. Um, it's a, I think, four millimeter hose, uh, and then I connected it up to this quick connect. So to swap out this laser, I can take this laser off in about 15 seconds. Uh, it's two eight millimeter bolts and this whole bracket slides out from my Z stage. I have a quick disconnect here for my air and the plug here um, on the side uh, and that's it. And I can put it back on, tighten the bolts in about 30 seconds. So even though this isn't a quick mount, um, it's very fast to take on and off. Uh, it's very rigid. This is three eighths inch aluminum. Um, I probably will in a future video uh, convert, I'm going to convert this cable to have a magnetic uh, docking uh, connector. Um, I don't really like plugging in and out of the laser on this connector. Sooner or later that's going to wear out. So I will have something on a future video um, that shows a little bit better way to do this. Um, but you can see it looks very good. It fits, uh, fits well like the other one did. Um, but like I said before, it's a little more compact and um, you know refined since it's a, a production version. I did try the air assist out in here, and as I was hoping, I get very good air velocity without a lot of uh, air flow volume. So I expect my air compressor is going to run a lot less with the same um, with the same results here. Um, one thing I did add uh, is this steel washer on the side, uh, you'll see that the whole case here is either aluminum, it's a little bit of plastic, and all the fasteners are stainless steel, so none of it's magnetic. Now, I want to use the touch plate with this, so I added the steel washer um, where I mounted the laser to my bracket, because I can, my magnetic uh, ground connection for um, the touch plate um, attaches nicely to that because it won't really stick to anything else. My bracket is aluminum and the whole laser is not magnetic. Okay, I'll turn my light on so you can see a little bit better. So um, this actually works, does work very well with the touch plate. Now I don't have my software all set up. Um, the problem is, you know, this touch plate and the software that came with it from Avid CNC are really designed to um, set Z0 for a cutting um, bit with respect to the tops of the surface. So with this laser, there actually has to be, uh, I think it's about 200 thousandths of a gap between the tip of this nozzle and the workpiece for the um, smallest focal point. Um, so I'm going to make some adjustments to the software later to adjust this, but just to show that this uh, works well, um, we'll just come down and touch off on this. And this is a spring-loaded bottom plate, but I've tried it several times and I always get very good electrical contact. So um, with this, with rudder bits, I know I get about a th one thousandth of an inch repeatability. So uh, I think this is going to make a very good, precise way to set the Z height of this laser for the best focal point once I get it dialed in. So I will follow up with a video on that later. But this at least proves the hardware works very well. And, and all I you know, really did here was add a nice place to connect the ground wire 
uh, the magnetic ground wire, um, and I did verify, like I said, that this case is, but this case is very conductive and it, and it works very well. So um, that's kind of a, a nice um, addition uh, with this laser because of the you know metal all the way through the body um, with a nice air assist nozzle that enables using a touch plate. One thing I should note about this air assist module is that it keeps the lenses very clean. Uh, normally, you know, with with smoke and other residue from cutting and etching, um, it'll get on the lenses and uh, you know require you to swab off. Uh, most laser manufacturers recommend you know using like a Q-tip or some cotton ball with. Uh, some isopropyl alcohol. Um, on this prototype laser, I had between 50 and 100 hours of pretty good use over the last five months with it. I never cleaned it, um, and, but I always did have this air assist nozzle on, and you know this doesn't really allow smoke to ever get in around the lens because it's constantly outgassing that that air jet. Um, I just took this off a couple days ago and swabbed it off with a clean white swab and I literally saw no dirt at all on it so um, this is extremely uh, good uh, because you know you really don't want to uh, get uh, residue on there it, it makes your uh, cuts much more inefficient and can damage your lenses as well so uh, almost really no cleaning required if you have this on now you want to make sure you always have air on when you're cutting so what I did was I automated my software so I added a pneumatic electronically controlled pneumatic valve for my air and so my um, whenever I do laser focusing um, my air automatically comes down and the nice thing about that is it blows a little jet of air down and holds the paper down that I use to focus on um, and then when I uh, in my uh, tool paths my uh, post processor file automatically turns on the airflow at the beginning of the of the job and turns it off at the end so I never have to remember to turn the air on it's always on when I'm cutting or etching so I, I recommend doing something like that as well because uh, then you know you don't have you know you don't have a brain lapse and then uh, go get a bunch of smoke on at some point okay I'm test firing this at 0.1 percent power right now so you can see kind of the outline of the visible light here. And this is my Y direction and my X direction of my two axes on my CNC. So now I'll put some measurements on real quick. So the outline of this visible beam comes out to 0.266 wide by 0.530 high. So it's basically a two to one aspect ratio. Um, and this is just the nature of the um, um, laser LEDs. They're long and skinny. In fact, if you just measure one of those by themselves, it's about 8 to 1 on most of these. Um, however, that's really not the part that's so important because the power density is not spread evenly across that each individual diode beam is concentrated much more in the middle so what actually determines your beam quality or or in some cases like the pixel size when you're doing rastering and trying to create an image is you know what's really in the center part of it so this can be deceiving in this in this case you would think that the uh, kerf or cut on the x-axis would be twice as high as is it would be in the, in the y direction and I found that's not true. My X direction is actually a narrower cut and cut through the wood earlier than the Y direction. And I didn't understand why when looking at this. But now I'll do a 100% test burn um, and you'll see why. So you can see there that under 100% power, uh, the burn is much more concentrated in the very center of this so um, I'm going to measure that now and see what the aspect ratio really is for something like a cutting on profile so you can see my measurement here in the upper right this is basically a square that's about 2.241 
So the, the part that really counts when you turn the power on higher uh, for burning is more like a square. Um, so you don't want to pay as much attention to the low power fringe uh, of the beam that you can see visually. You want to, uh, what's more important is what the burn image is. And you can see these uh, three diodes appear not to be perfectly uniform across them. Uh, what I found is that varies from test burn to test burn quite a bit. A lot just based on the uh, material of uh, wood's pretty non-uniform. So sometimes these three uh, little burn marks look very close to the same. Sometimes they don't. Uh, but they always end up to be roughly a square on this. So that's really good. I mean, that's, you know, when this is focused down to a very small point you basically end up with a square pixel which is kind of what you want and it also makes the uh, the curve in both the y and z or sorry y and x directions uh, pretty close to each other um, I've measured them under a microscope and they come out to be within a one or two thousandths of an inch of each other in y and z or y and x directions and this is what it looks like with the laser turned off so you can see the tall skinny uh, rectangle of the visible total visible blue light versus the part that actually burns when it's run at 100% power. So this is a microscope picture of the x-axis which is slightly narrower. You can see this is about 5,000 5 thousandths of an inch wide and so this is um, the direction that's cutting across the three diodes. Um, so this is about as fine as it can uh, burn. And this is the microscope image of the y-axis direction cut um, or edge. And you can see it's about seven or eight thousandths of an inch wide. So uh, this is, so they're off, they differ the x and y by about two thousandths of an inch or so. Okay, so kind of in review, um, the production version of this laser um, seems to have a little bit better alignment of the three diodes, which is good. Um, it's got the connector on the side, I didn't mention that, versus on the top. Uh, it was on the very top before on the uh, prototype, which, because I'm running this underneath my router head right here, um, it could get dirt and, and sawdust and stuff would, would fall in there uh, once in a while. So I like that they mounted this on the side. Um, the air hose is back and out of the way for the air assist, which is great, and the air assist nozzle is very good. It's much quieter. Um, it's using a lot less air, and I still, when I turn it on, I have a very good, strong, small jet that I can feel under there, so I, I really like this. So uh, I think, uh, you know, this, I'm happy so far for all the changes they made now the real test is let's go cut with it so i'm going to set set up a cut um, and, and make some tests now okay this is a uh, job that uh, it's a it's an image i bought off of etsy um, it, it's um, 16 inches tall 13 inches wide uh, three ply one eighth inch baltic birch um, took about an hour hour and a half to cut uh, I set it up to run at about 11 inches per minute. Um, I can cut through this plywood a little faster than that, but the problem with a really big sheet like this is that as you're cutting, you'll see when this is done, I removed a significant portion of the wood, and so it tends not to lay flat once you start cutting into the job uh, pretty far. And so um, the the top surface is not at all flat so the focal point isn't the optimum from one end to the other to the middle and right and so forth so uh, i find that on these really big sheets of plywood like this that get kind of warped as you're cutting or that are warped to start with it works a lot better to slow down even more than you normally would just to make sure that you cut through otherwise you end up picking all these little pieces out uh, you'll see this is a very detailed piece and i didn't want to have to pick everything out with a with a toothpick or a, uh, something like that later. So try to make it cut very clean.
Okay, this is the finished project. Um, took about an hour, hour and a half to cut out um, on the production laser. Um, did a nice job cutting through everything. Had to poke out a couple little pieces that were hanging on by a hair, but otherwise it did a very nice job. Um, cut this, this is a 16 by 12 inches, 16 by 13 almost. Um, and it's a 1 8 inch plywood. Overall, again, I'm very pleased with the production version of the laser that I upgraded to. So the production one is here on the left, and the original prototype that I did a couple videos on here on the right. Uh, again, in, to recap, the main things are a, kind of a cleanup of the case. Uh, this protrusion in the front where some of the electronics and connector wonder has now been um, embedded deeper in the case. You can see from the side profile that... The uh, new laser is a, a little bit thinner in the forward to back direction. They moved the connector to the right side, which is great because now dust and debris don't fall into the connector um, like they did on the uh, prototype version. And most importantly, the air assist nozzle is easy to remove for lens cleaning, and it's also um, much more efficient for air. Um, I get probably just a rough guess three to four times less air consumption because the orifice is less a little less than half of the diameter of the one that I uh, had in the CO2 laser nozzle that I ret uh, retrofitted onto the um, prototype unit. So works much better and it's a lot closer to the workpiece as well, the new one. So it uh, doesn't have to blow as hard. So I can, it's a lot quieter and a lot less air consumption. Um, and it's a very robust uh, metal nozzle there. And um, in testing it out with the touch plate, it works very good to set um, the Z height there uh, with, with that. So very pleased with this. Um, it's a good replacement. Um, I'm going to come up with a better, faster mount for this because I find myself going back and forth between the router and laser much more often than I thought. I uh, really like adding the laser touch to my projects along with the router. So I'm going to, uh, even though I can swap this out in a matter of oh, less than a minute easily, um, I'm going to come up with something that uh, has probably like a magnetic uh, cable attached for the electrical connections. I do not want to wear out this connector inside the laser. I already have a pretty quick attachment for my air hose up here, that doesn't really bother me, but um, the electrical connection and the physical mount, um, I want to make a little bit more convenient. So um, when I come up with something for that and a, uh, more, a more precise and faster focusing and XY alignment procedure, I have a couple jigs in mind there. I'll be doing a video on that sometime in the near future. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this, please press subscribe. Um, if you have any questions or any requests for other videos, uh, please enter it in the comments and I'll take a look at it and, and work on it in the future.